Okay? And so I want to talk to you with the idea today about how when we go about comparing our lives to someone else's life, or when we go about comparing the things that people have and wanting those things in our lives, it's really telling God that he don't know what he's doing in our life. And God is at work in your life. You just need to believe God is at work in your life. Amen? Look at someone and say, God's at work in your life, in my life. Amen? And so as we look at the things that God is doing, we don't always like those things. We are challenged at times by those things. But I'm here to tell you, God is not brought anything into our life, any circumstance or any situation that is going to harm our lives. God is bringing us to a place of dependence on Him. Amen? And so sometimes, sometimes it's harder for us. Well, I'll just speak to the men for a minute. This is what I know. Sometimes as men, we're hard-headed. Any hard-headed men out here? Women, be careful if you're pointing at them, right? <laughs> All right. Well, well, as we get into this message today, I, I want to kind of set it up because there's because if we're going to compare, let's just compare for, for a moment in time, y'all, y'all bear with me, some differences between men and women real quick. Let's talk about the bathroom. A man has six items in his bathroom. He's got a toothbrush, a tooth, toothpaste, shaving cream, a razor, and a bar soap, and a towel. Six items. A woman, on average, has 337. In which, in which any man at any given time would be able to name about 20 of those items only. The other ones, we would have no clue what they go to. <laughs> so there are just some things that are, that are different in our lives as men and women. That's, that's, that's true, and we know it to be true. And so, uh, you know, God made us this way. Well, let's talk about the future for a moment. For, the, for, for a woman, a woman worries about the future until she gets a husband. This, just go with me. <laughs> a man never worries about the future until he gets a wife. <laughs> go with me. <laughs> Let's talk about success. A, a successful man... <laughs> A successful man is one who makes more money than his wife can spend. A successful woman is one who can find such a man. (laughs) Just a couple more, just a couple more. Marriage. A married man, a woman marries a man expecting he will change. But he doesn't. Oh, you women, yeah, now he's preaching. Now a man marries a woman expecting that she would never change, but she does. Uh Uh-oh. One more, one more, we're done. Arguments. A woman has the last word in any argument. Amen? Anything a man says after that is the beginning of a new argument. <laughs> all right. God is at work all around in our lives. And if we're not careful, we miss out on the work and the move of God in our lives because we're all different. We're all different. We can't categorize so much women in this place or men in this place. We are, every one of us are all unique. Every one of us are all thought out. Every one of us are hand designed by our creator, our father in heaven. Every one of us are important in his eyes and important to this earth. Just as God created the sun to to hang in the sky and the heat up and give us heat and and, and give us light, if it wasn't hanging where it was, we would burn up and this world would would not be here and we wouldn't exist. Just as he had a design for that sun and, and where it needed to be placed, you are designed with that same intent and that same purpose for this world. You are important to this world and you are important to God. 
And you are valuable to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And He loves you. He loves us. And when we compare things and we look at things that is going on in this world, then we are a lot of times taking us out of an intimate, deep relationship with our Father. And so comparison is the death of contentment. And God wants us to be content in every moment. Content in every moment. If we are in the presence of the Most High God at every moment, we should be content. Can I get an amen? amen? If we are in God's presence and He was with us and, and, and if He walked through the door tangibly and was with us in this moment, would we not be content? I mean, it wouldn't matter what our, what our house or our job, what was going on. We would be content because the Lord was with us. And I believe as we go through our day, contentment comes from encountering the presence of our Father. And when we wake up and we do devotion, we spend time praying and seeking God, it's to bring in that presence to where we can have peace and have fulfillment and have serenity in the midst of our day. No situation outside of that moment will bring you contentment in your heart. No right choice, right decision in a career or, or, or decision in your life is going to bring you contentment unless the presence of God is with you and upon you. And so if we're going to not find contentment, we're going to be like a squeaky wheel that will eventually freeze up. If you've ever heard anything that is squeaked, the fan that is squeaking in your living room, eventually that squeak becomes louder and louder and louder until it stops working. And God's presence is the oil to that squeak. And it's the oil to our life that brings contentment and satisfaction in all things. And so 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12, it says, We do not dare to classify ourselves or compare ourselves with some who, command, who uh, commend themselves when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, it says they are not wise. And so, you know, Paul is trying to teach uh, the, the, Corinth, the church in Corinthians that, that they are God's design and no one, two people are going to do the same thing or have the same gifting. And, and if they are going to look into someone else's life, their neighbors, if they're going to look into their friend's life or look into someone that they look up to for some kind of contentment or some kind of idea of what God's, how God designed them, they're going to miss out on what God is trying to do in them and through them. And it would be like me early in the ministry looking up to the, the pastors and preachers that have spoken into my life or those that are on TV that, that bring a good word uh, to, to, uh, to my life. I'm never going to be someone else, and neither are you. And it's unwise because we, when we search things out that God doesn't intend for us to have, we don't truly get to that place where God wants us to be. And so, get content where you're at. I'm not talking about satisfied. I'm not talking about losing your dreams or hopes. I'm talking about content in the presence of God. God is with you. Amen? And He's for you. What happens is, is contentment, if it starts to die, then we, we start to get prideful. And comparison makes us prideful. We see in Luke 18, 11 and 12, it says, The Pharisees, they stood by, by himself and they prayed, and he said, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. I know none of us have ever thought that before, right? God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like the tax collector. And he goes on to say in verse 12, he says, I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. And so here, if we're not careful, uh, the pride will come in. And, and pride will take us out of what God is trying to do because God is trying to get us to fully rely on Him at every moment of our day. Amen? 
He's, he's getting us to a place of fully relying on him. And so some of us here are in a dry season. Some of us here, our will is squeaky. And I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, that this dry, squeaky season of your life can be the most fertile time in your life if you will just seek God and look to Him for answers and directions for your life. What in life has made you think that you could compare your life to something or someone else? Where do you get that notion? Where do we get that notion? TV? Society? Family? I mean, huh? Fiery darts of the enemy, the devil? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God has come to give us life and give us a full measure of life. So a full measure of life is finding contentment in the midst of where we're at in this moment because God is with us, and with God, everything else doesn't matter. But yet we have to live a life, and so I say it like this. Get everything you you want, everything you need, get it all, but make sure none of it gets you. Be willing to give it away. Be willing to help someone with it. Be willing to be a conduit. Be willing to be a flow of God. Be willing to allow the Spirit to touch your life and move through you in such a way that it changes someone else's life. Amen? Make sure it doesn't get you. And so comparison not only uh, brings death uh, to contentment, it also makes us prideful, but the last thing is it makes us resentful. Resentful. And we see in 1 Samuel 18, 6 and 9, it says, When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistines, the woman came out of town and, and, uh, of Israel to meet King Saul. And they were singing and dancing a joyful song and had tambourines and lutes. And they danced and they sang this song. Saul has slayed his thousands, but David, David has slayed tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. This, uh, this refrain galled him, and, and, and it says that they have credited David with tens of thousands, and he thought, but we have only a thousands. Only accredited me to a thousands. What more, what more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. And I just wonder how many times in our life something good happens to a coworker, something good happens to our friend, something good happens to our neighbor, and we get resentful because we're thinking, well, what about the good we're doing? And see, I'm kind of preaching now because I can relate to that. I mean, doesn't it, doesn't it happen to us all? I mean, we're going through life and we're, we're doing good and we're trying to make a difference in our lives and other people's lives and then something good is happening outside our world and we think, you know, God has forgotten us. And I really believe that as we go through this day and as we go through life and the, the kind of the, the will is squeaking louder and louder, what we have forgot, what we have forgotten is who gives the gifts. My mentor in ministry he said, Dan, don't worry about the gifts. Seek the gift giver. There are things that God has planned for you that you will never see unless you seek the gift giver. There are things that God has for you right around in your marriage, in your fight. There are things all in, all waiting. Every moment, I think there are things that God is waiting to give and bestow in our lives, and we just need to seek the gift giver and not so much the gift. Comparison makes me resentful because, well, you help me. Why? Huh? We're self-centered. Entitlement. What else? Self-will. 
too boastful and prideful. Brothers and sisters, we all will fall short. We're all going to make mistakes. We're going to leave here today and we're going to make mistakes. We're going to, matter of fact, we're going to walk out of these doors and we might see a bright, brand new, red, shiny truck and we're going to think, man, that's a nice truck. I wish I had that. I'm not talking about anybody in here. This is what I know to be true. In and of ourselves, in and of our own power, we will fall short. We will make the wrong choice. When we walk out of here, if we're not content in the presence of God and Him alone first, then we'll go out of here and we'll miss what God is trying to do in our hearts and our minds. And so, you know, it was interesting. Yesterday evening, um, or last night, uh, we had family come by, and uh, as they were sitting, I, th- I think, as they were sitting there on the couch, some of y'all know I'm in the middle, I've in the middle of a 12, well, I'm in the middle of a 14 day fast. I've gone 12 days without eating. Okay. And so, well, in, in, last night on the couch, one of them made comments about baby back ribs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll just tell you the truth. Every conversation I've had with everybody this week has been about food. <clears throat> And I'm going to tell you the truth, it has, it has not bothered me one bit. Not one bit. But it's interesting because one of the comments she said, uh, because in and through that conversation they found out uh, that I was in the middle of this fast. And, they, oh, I'm sorry about that. I was like, no, it's no big deal. And, and she just shared, you know what? I'm glad God hasn't called me to a 14-day fast. <laughs> and I thought, well... You may be glad, but God may be calling you to that. And, and what I, what I want to say is this, in our lives, as God's called us and he's calling us, it's all going to be different. What God calls you to do may not be what he calls me to do. Matter of fact, I'd probably say it's not going to be what he calls me to do. Because we're a part of uh, the body of Jesus and he is working in our lives. And so if I went back to that scripture where he talked about pride, he said, I fast, I fast twice a week and give a tenth. I mean, that's prideful. He's, sharing, he's saying, this is what I do. I'm more spiritual than, than anyone else. And I'm here to tell you that your call on your life is you and God working things out into a place of contentment, into a place of fulfillment where your will's not squeaking no more. Where you're not boasting about things God is doing in your life to the point it makes someone else feel less than. Now I'm going to tell you, I think we should boast all day long about the Lord. Amen? I mean, if we got something to boast about, it's God's power, it's might, His grace, it's His mercy, it's His love, it's His creation, you and I. It's, I mean, I think we should boast about that, but in such a way that God is glorified in our lives.